Teenage years are some of the hardest years of our lives. We start trying to figure out who we are and what we want to do. Of those four very formative years, we spend about 4,900 hours in class. So we should make those hours count, right? I went to a really competitive high school and it was clear to me that some of these kids were not making the most of their time. Many of them slept through the classes that they did come to and flat out refused to do any of the homework, like this guy. Let's call him Bob. Some of them, though, loved school and did really well and tried really hard, like this girl. We can call her Sally. Before my eyes, those kids that were doing well kept doing better, and the kids that were doing poorly kept doing increasingly worse. Unfortunately, school separates teens based on willingness to jump through hoops, something that it wasn't designed to do, but it does very well. Bob doesn't want to jump through the hoop but Sally does it very well, and their different performances reflect that. We've all known kids like Bob who just didn't want to be in school. Some of us may have even been like Bob. It's sad because when you think about it, we were all so into school when we were young, so what changes? Why do kids stop wanting to engage in school once they reach their teens, which is when it really matters? Many of them say things like, school isn't for me, or I'm never going to use this stuff again. Essentially, they feel like they don't belong in school. So, what is belonging? Belonging is the extent to which an individual feels accepted or respected in their school. It involves the student's perception of the school climate and how well they think they fit into what they see. If we want to help the teens who feel like school isn't for them, we want to boost those feelings of belonging in school. So, let's talk about how we can best help Bob. Whether Bob feels like he fits in will depend hugely on what he values, and what he values will come from his social relationships. First off, we have peers, who are responsible for socializing Bob to what's normal and valued by others their age. Unfortunately, we'd be kidding ourselves if we thought that we could affect who a teenager chooses as a friend, so that isn't an option for us. Second, Bob is influenced by his family, in both positive and negative ways, depending on their circumstances. But obviously, we can't change a kid's family circumstances on our own, so that isn't an option for us to help, either. But, here's the shining star of influence. Teachers. Teachers can play a huge role in teens' lives as a positive role model. So, the question is... how? The relationships teachers have with their students help shape the students' ideas about themselves. We want to encourage Bob to see himself as a student, someone who belongs in school and can do well in school. The first step is continuing to show the equality and sensitivity to every student that all teachers strive for. More importantly though, we need to emphasize Bob's identity as a student, which we can do through a couple of tested and effective interventions. First off, exercises in self-affirmation, which include listing and applying your personal values, have been helpful with students' ability to cope with threats to their identity. If we can help Bob identify values of his, and then help him come up with ways in which those values can be applied to school, he can be able to see how he can use what he is good at and what he cares about in a school setting. Second, one study showed kids stories that were written by older kids that discussed times in which they had felt like they didn't belong. The kids were told to read these stories like they were editing them, but these stories actually had a deeper effect than that. Kids realize that feeling like you don't belong is a very normal experience, and it actually led to better school performance. Just showing kids that they do belong in school, and showing them how they can help bolster their identity as a student, with these few short interventions, has noticeable effects in terms of engagement and academic achievement. We have nothing to lose, so why shouldn't we try? Maybe if we help Bob see that he belongs in school and can do equally well in school as Sally does, then there won't be this huge discrepancy in performance. We just need to teach kids that they can see themselves as students, and hopefully all kids can reach their full potential, because they all belong in school.